know, we started a very, very word of God where we looked at what the kingdom of God is like. Or we looked at the parable of the vineyard workers in Matthew 21 to 16. So it was in the response to Peter's question. Peter asked Christ, We are giving our all. What are we going to get at the end? Then Christ answered unto him that whatever you give up now, you have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Saying, Whatever you do for the kingdom of God, your reward is what? Everlasting life. Amen. So he said, Everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother, wife or children or land, for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and inherit the life of God everlasting. And last week we looked at a heaven worth striving for. Why do we strive for heaven? Why do we want to be, I mean, be, 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 be in the house of Christ? In Revelation 21, 18 to 27, we looked at where Apostle John was on the island of Patmos, where Christ revealed what the end days was going to be. And he said, he was given a glimpse of heaven, the vision, and he learned that heaven is a glorious place because it's a dwelling place of Christ. That is our home, saints. That is your home. Everything we do on this planet, our reward is in heaven. Your reward is in heaven. Say amen. amen. Do not despair. Do not be discouraged. Stand the race. Stand firm. Christ is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, Lord, I thank you this morning. King of Kings, we have come to your place of worship. We pray that you be with us. Everything, Lord, that we preach, let it come straight from the secret room of heaven in Jesus' name. Let it manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. We go out and be the light of the world in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Could I, I have someone read Revelation 22, 20, 12 to 21, please? Revelation 22, 12 to 21. Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. Amen. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. Amen. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book. Amen. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. 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 Our title for today is Jesus is coming. Are you ready for your reward? Yes. Amen. Jesus is coming. Are you ready for your reward? Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> How do we know that Christ is coming? How do you know? Can somebody help me? How do you know that Christ is coming? Not, not from me. I'm not, I'm not telling anything. How, how do you know? We are knowing that Christ is coming. The sign. Thank you. The, the, the sign. So, any, anybody help? Yes. And he said some days will happen when he is about to come. Thank you. So many of them are coming now. Thank you. We could testify that. Amen. Thank you, prophetess. So, the signs. 
the end times, isn't it? So we know that the end is near. He specifically said in Matthew 24 that these are the signs. When I'm ready to come, it will come to pass. And like Prophet said, we look around us all around the world, and the things are happening, they're coming through. We, we, we can see it. Isn't it? We can see it physically, spiritually. I mean, some people dream dreams and they see the end times. And physically, we are seeing it. Wars, famine, pestilence, starvation all around the world. But he went on and said in Revelation 22 30, he said, he said, Behold, I come quickly. He said himself. He told John, Behold, I come quickly. Quickly means that he will appear suddenly. Suddenly, we are here. Suddenly, Christ is here. Are we going to make it to heaven? Have you asked yourself that question? <laughs> it's a good question to ask every single day. If Christ appears now, will I go to heaven? You'll be ready. Uh, Brother B will be ready. Amen. You'll be ready to go to heaven. Uh, it's ready. Yeah. If Christ calls you today, you went to bed tomorrow, you are no more. Would you go to his resting place and wait for him to take you to heaven? It's a question to ask. Saints, these are the questions that the enemy wants to deviate you from. Not finding out. It's as simple as the enemy will give you th unproductive things to focus on. And believe me, the book of Revelation is a book a lot of believers, they do not like reading at all. Believe me. They, <laughs> they will read it from Genesis to what? Jude. To, uh, John, John 3. Is it John? Jude. Jude, thank you. From Genesis to Jude, and then they'll, they'll stop at the book of Revelation. Because they say, ah, this one is too scary. But say, it is not scary at all. The book of Revelation is the most simplest book ever in the whole of the Bible. Because guess what? It predicts your future. Amen. It predicts what is going to happen next. Amen. It predicts what God has in, in store for you. The plans he has for you. Embrace the book of Revelation. And everything will be clear. You know that your work with, your work with God, it is the awesome work with God. You know sometimes when you have a friend, you work with a good friend, you know that this friend will add value to your life. And you know that some friends, they will not add value to you. What do you do? You go away from that friend. But you stay with the friends that will add value to your life. Revelation will add value to your life. Saints, the end times is near. We can never ignore the book of Revelation. Christ is saying, look, I can quickly, I can appear now. A king in the Bible asked for Christ for extension of his years. I thought, as a, I thought, I thought that, I mean, once, once Christ, declares, Christ, Christ declares that you're going to die today, that's it, you are going to die. But he went to his chambers, he knelt, knelt down, and he prayed to, 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 to get another 15 years. So Christ can sometimes erase what he has planned and then come suddenly. All those things that he, 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 he preached in uh, Matthew 24, he can say, look, I'm not waiting until everything comes to pass. I'll come now. Because now I need to harvest the saints. Exactly. He's God. He makes decisions in his own time. We have no power over it. So Christ is saying, I come quickly, and I come suddenly, and my reward is with me. Wow. It's not a reward for you, saints. A reward so great that he says the reward is everlasting life. Saints, imagine, imagine, imagine I tell you that this is this, this, this is physical world. Let's use something that everybody is familiar with. Imagine your reward is to get the Bank of England to print one million pounds into your bank after every month. For life. You see, everybody is smiling. For life, that's your reward. Whether you work, whether you sleep, you do not sleep, that one million pounds in your bank every month. What are you going to do to get that reward? Any ideas? What are you going to do to get that reward? No, it's free. It's free. The bank of is giving you that reward for free. Cash it. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. You do not have to work for it. It's free. It's free. Exactly. But guess what? The reward Christ is promising you and I is greater than the money than the monetary value the Bank of England can give you. It is everlasting life. You are going to see all the saints from Genesis to Revelation. Peter, Paul, Abraham, Noah, Jude, Mary, Enoch. Saints, it's a good <laughs> Elijah. 
So Christ is saying, I will have my reward with me to give to everyone according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end of your life. He knew you before you were even created in your man, ma, mom's womb. The end of your life, he knows what you are going where or what you are going to end up. But you also have to know the value of your life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because without Christ, saints, we are nothing. Without Christ, we are backing, making noise. Without the love of Christ in our hearts and the love that you have for your neighbor, we cannot move the kingdom of God. Jesus will return will be standing like us and unpredictable. He said in Matthew 24, 36, but of that day, our knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but only my father. He's saying, it's only my father who knows the hour that he will come. Even I, Christ, I have no idea. So you and I, we should be preparing every single day. Every minute of your life because you have no idea when the trumpet will sound. You have no idea when your last breath will be. You have no idea when you'll be sacked with sins of God like this. You have no idea where your soul will end up. But Christ is saying, my reward is with me. If you diligently seek me and work for my kingdom. Since you are, you are here this morning because you are doing a good job. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You are doing a good job for the kingdom of God. That's why you are sat here. Somebody is playing football this morning. Somebody is, I mean, they went night club yesterday and they are still asleep. But you are here. It means that you are doing something for the kingdom of God. Say amen. Pat yourself on your back that you do something for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Be encouraged. Jesus will reward each person according to his deeds. So Jesus' promise includes the fact that he will reward each person according to his deeds. Faithful believers may anticipate rewards. It's like, for example, uh, 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 before Christmas, we're looking for our gifts, isn't it? We are happy. We are. We are. We, are we, we, we want to know what gifts mom and dad is going to buy for us. We are eagerly waiting on 25th of December to open our gifts. 24th of December at 11:59.99999. You are ready to open the gifts because that is 25th of December. A second later, then you can open your gifts. These are the gifts that you and I will have to look forward to. Even Kana gifts, we are eagerly and happy to open it, let alone the gifts of the eternal life. Hallelujah. When the Apostle Paul neared execution, he looked forward to receiving the kind of righteousness that the Lord will award to him. Paul was ready to be crucified. He added that he will not only receive the gift of Christ, he said, All who have loved Christ are praying will also receive the crown of righteousness. He said to Timothy, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only me, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Saints, so Paul is saying, Christ will reward me. But also remember that Christ will also reward for your good deeds. Hallelujah. Whatever you do here, God is watching and God is taking notes. God is putting your name in the book of life, writing good notes about you because you are moving the kingdom of God. You are doing good for the kingdom of God. He said, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. God is saying, when you, you endure temptation, when you go through the fire, the pit of hell, and you are able to come out, you see, your test will become your testimony for someone. Hallelujah, saints. Your te- that is why, you see, when people go through a lot of situations and they want to, I mean, give up, I mean, you, are, you are doing a disservice to the kingdom of God. Because you, as a person, that your test is a testimony for somebody. To, for somebody to be delivered. Because you went through the same situation, then you can give advice, isn't it? To somebody who's going through exactly the same situation. Now, look, this is what I did. And this is what I did to come out. Let me share. That person will sit down and listen to you, isn't it? Because you have been through that test before. 
But if you haven't been through that test, how am I going to take advice from you? You haven't been through that test. You have no idea what I'm going through. But I can reason with you that, look, I have been there. I used to be this person. I used to be this person. This is what I did to come out. Amen. So your life will be a testament to God and the people around you. That's what God is saying in sense. Because your reward, you have to, you, you see, you have to keep on piling your reward in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You have to stop piling your reward in heaven. Yeah. I will share with you, you see, not all rewards are equal. No. <laughs> not all rewards are equal. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I mean, <laughs> let's let's see, let's let's try this. Let's let's try some rewards in the in the kind of this. <laughs> these these are my rewards. Okay? These are my rewards. Or oh, this this is the reward of, 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 of each one of us. Okay? Imagine, imagine look. I said, I'll reward you. Give you something of value. You have no idea what reward will contain. You have no idea. I'll give you something of value. Okay, that is important to you. But you have to do something for me in order to receive that reward. Okay. I've, I haven't shown you what is in each gift or reward. You have no idea. What are you going to do? You have no idea. What is inside that bag? What, what are you going to do to, to, get, to get this reward? You have no idea. Are you going to go out of your way, do a thousand times your work to receive this bag? Okay. Are you going to go out of your way to do maybe just a bit? Just, just a tiny bit to receive this. This box. Or are you going to go out of your way to receive this? reward. Okay? All these rewards come to what? In sizes. This is a bigger reward than this. Now you've seen, you've seen the reward. So if I ask you, you choose the bigger one. <laughs> that, <laughs> this is also another reward. Okay? And this is also another reward. According to your deeds on this planet. So Christ is saying, I reward you according to your deeds. Whatever you do is whatever you are going to get. So say, keep on stockpiling your rewards in heaven. Keep on stockpiling your rewards in heaven. So one day when you go to heaven, and maybe your reward was winning souls in the kingdom of God, and God says, look, you have been a, safe, a, a faithful servant. Okay? I'll give you a crown of life. Then you'll be able to have your reward and then have it and show it to your friends. Oh, wow. See? Yes. The road I got from God. <laughs> Proudly walk and show it to the end. <laughs> See? Because I did good at the planet. Okay? And somebody <laughs> who, who received this this way. Because every every word is different in heaven. Yeah. Somebody who received this standard box. <laughs> 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 that no one need to see. But it's, it's a reward. You are in heaven. Yeah. God doesn't discriminate. No, 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 no. Exactly. But you will receive according to what? Your work. So do not be that person in heaven where your friends are coming and you're having a reward. Be the person who is proudly showing off his or her reward in heaven because you did a good work. Or are you going to be that person that received that tiny, tiny reward? Eh? Tiny, tiny reward. You know, kids, when, when we're growing up and in nursery, and for example, if we've done something good and the teacher is going to reward us, Okay, you see that they have some uh, parcels, presents, and if a teacher gives the big present to another kid, we are trying to get that yeah. big present, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if the teacher gives out the smaller, <clears throat> out, we want a big one. Since that is what you and I will have to strive for. Yeah. That's what is in store for you in heaven if you do the deeds of God on this planet. Amen. Amen.
When the chief shepherd, which is Jesus Christ, shall appear, he shall, you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. He said, Your glory, your, the crown that I'll give you to you, it will never fade away. Rewards are promised to faithful believers that will likely be awarded at the judgment seat of Christ. So, at the judgment seat of Christ, Christ will look at your deeds and accordingly reward you. But we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. So, whether you've done something good or not so good, Christ is taking notes. Christ is watching. The judgment, the judgment of each Christian is not the determination of who will enter heaven. Because the Bible says we are forgiven the moment we accepted Christ through salvation. As Paul says, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Our sins, past, present, and future are all paid on Calvary Cross. And the psalmist said, He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our liberties. For as the heaven is above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. For as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. So Christ is saying that he will reward you no matter what because you are saved through salvation. He will reward you because his son came to deliver you out of the pits of hell. But your reward is going to their conditions to receive the rewards of Christ. As their conditions to, to get your monthly salary from your work. Your salary is like the reward of your uh, services to your workplace, isn't it? The reward of your Christ, the crown of righteousness, will also be your reward. So those judged at the judgment seat are the believers in the Lord. So the Lord will bring the believers to the judgment seat. But the Bible says that God will reward believers based upon actions done for him. Also unto him, all Lord belongs mercy for you, renders to every man according to his word. Hallelujah. Amen. So what kind of rewards will believers receive in heaven? Are you happy to know the rewards you receive in heaven? Yes. You should be happy that Christ has a reward for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Christians who diligently run a spiritual race will receive rewards for their faithfulness and the judgments of Christ. Rewards which they will reinvest in the glory of Christ's eternity. Because you are with him, your life has been invested in Christ for eternity. He invested in you, now you invested in, in, in him, in his kingdom, and now you are with him. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a beautiful scene to behold. It's a beautiful scene to behold. I mean, there was this lady, you know, they have um, what they call an uh, end of near death experience. NDE, near death experience. And it's like, you are, you, uh, you are almost dead, but you are not dead. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Your, your spirit man or spirit woman leaves the body. Okay, you are just at the point of. Not, not returning. You are just there. So your spirit, man or woman, leaves your body and it will go to a place. And what they say is that immediately you go, there's a small light in a far away distance and that light is attracted to you. It's pulling you towards it. If you're a believer, if you're a child of God. I've never heard somebody, I mean, on the other side, but this is, I mean, people going to paradise. So, it pulls you toward that light. Okay, and at, at that light, this lady said, she went to that light and then there appeared a body of Christ. So just at the point of going, Christ stood there. He said, no, 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 your time is not yet. So Christ was ready to reward this lady to take away to paradise. But because her time was not the Christ said, no, no, you have to go back and tell what I tell you. That you should be ready. The end is near. Okay? So your reward is always, Christ is always watching and waiting for you at that point. Where your spirit man or woman just leaves your body, is there, ready to give you that token and say, look, you have been a faithful servant. I'll put you in the resting place with the rest of the saints before I take you to heaven. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful scene to behold, saints. It is a beautiful scene because you cannot be a citizen of this planet or a visitor. We are just visitors. Visit of, of this planet and miss heaven, the glory of God. I mean, it, it, you, you should make it impossible not, not to miss heaven. Make it impossible not to miss heaven. 
Because it says in, in, in the eternal fire, the brimstone for life. Hey, have you, have you, have you, you know Australia, I went there, the Australia and America, the bushfires. You, oh God, no. They just, they just go, and cities are wiped out. Within minutes, everything is flattened. Yeah. Is that why you want to end up saints? Yeah. Not at all. We want to end up with Christ for eternity. Yeah. Where every single day we are bowing and worshiping him. Yeah. Glory be unto the Most High. Yeah. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. Your Father. Your Advocate. Your Prince of Peace. Your everything. And he said, oh, I will come in the midst and mingle and say, hello, how are you this morning? Hey, Mom, Berlin, how are you? Christ said, how are you this morning? You are good. You are fine. He said, oh, come with me. Sit with me. Let's enjoy dinner. Let's enjoy praises. Let's enjoy the, 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 the saints. This is the heaven you and I we should strive for. This is your reward in heaven. So whatever you are going through on this planet Earth, you see, the devil will make sure to shake you out of your faith. But the devil is a liar. If, he's, if, if he has strength, he would have conquered Christ in heaven before Christ shocked him on this planet. But because he's weak, he couldn't. So do not let the devil win. Do not let the devil deceive you that you are nothing. Do not let the devil plant things inside your head that you cannot do it. Do not let the devil discourage you that because of your background, your education, this, this, um, this job I cannot apply because of this. No, 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 no. Apply! Because your services might be needed to win somebody to the kingdom of God. Be bold, because the devil knows that if you apply for that job, somebody will be saved to heaven. So you put Things you know, no, 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 I'm not qualified for this job. No! What is the worst thing somebody can say to you? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing. You apply and say no, move on. I mean, come on. When you have this attitude, the kingdom of God and serving God becomes easy for you. Saints, this is the God you and I will serve. The worst thing somebody can say is no. Yes. Next. And no, no means next opportunity. And no, next opportunity. So they say no, they say, what is the next opportunity? Who wants the next opportunity? And get it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So, the reward you are going to receive in heaven, the, the judgment seat will not be your final exam to determine your suitability for heaven. If you have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, your sins have been forgiven. And that is what qualifies you to enter the holy presence of Christ. Like the vineyard workers, some workers receive a lot of, um, uh, the same amount of money for one hour. Someone received the same amount of money for working six hours. Someone received the same amount of money for working nine hours. And they thought it wasn't fair. But Christ said, look, have this, 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 this is like heaven. Everybody that gives their lives to Christ will enter heaven. But, there's a big but, but their rules will be different. Hallelujah. That is where you and I, we have to worship God with gladness. Amen. So when we stand before the judgment of Christ, our faithful service to him will be evaluated and rewarded. He's going to check. We did a check, 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 and check, and check what you've done. With perfect knowledge, he will assess your every thought, motive, and action. The prospect of this coming to judgment should motivate you to be more like Christ in your daily life. Running your spiritual way towards heavenly rewards. Every single day, your race should be running towards what heavenly rewards, and it is not it is not it is not um, selfish to run after heavenly rewards. Not at all. It is not selfish to run after heavenly rewards because that is what Christ wants us to run after. Because He needs your service in His kingdom. So He said, "Look, be selfish to accumulate more rewards in heaven, but do not." Trample over people to get that reward. Okay? Love people. Love people with all your heart. Okay? Go out of your way and help people. Because at the end, somebody will also see. And also, God will bring somebody in your path to also help you. Amen.
Jesus is a good God. So in heaven, Christ is going to reward with five crowns. Okay? Five crowns. Five crowns of rewards. The first one will be the victor's crown. The victor's crown. He says, serving God in God's narrowing your focus on, the, on those things with the highest eternal, eternal value. When you serve in Christ, put your, your thoughts, your deeds, your actions on the things that have highest eternal value. Life is full of good things that take your focus off of Christ. It is up to you to identify them and choose accordingly. Those who exercise self-discipline will receive the victor's crown. So Christ said, if you exercise self-discipline and follow my words, my deeds, you are, I'm going to give you the victor's crown. He said, and every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in, in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. He's saying that people on this planet, they do things to what? Obtain corruptible crowns. It means that the rewards that they, they get on this planet, they are corruptible. It means that they can what? Rot. But the crown you and I, the victor's crown, is incorruptible. It's made with what? Solid gold in heavenly places. He said, I therefore so run, not as on uncertainty, so fight. Not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. You see, Christianity is only is it's all about self-discipline. That is all. Is that not so? It's, I mean, it's self-discipline. What? Discipline yourself to what? To pray. Self-discipline. Discipline yourself to fast. Discipline yourself to read the word of God. Discipline yourself to Worship God with all your minds, with all your heart, with all your body. Loving God, loving people. That, that's self-discipline in itself. That's Christianity. You see, that is why a lot of I mean, believers, we are able to overcome. The person who, who manifested a lot of self-discipline was Saul, who later became Paul. That, he mastered self-discipline. But guess what? Christ needed to show him self-discipline. First. Because this guy was so mean that his job waking waking up every day was to hunt Christians, crucify Christians, and kill them. That was his job. He had no business on this planet. His business was to end people's life by serving Christ. So every day Saul will wake up, mm, what's the list for today? Okay, I'm going to Hanley, I'm going to Bertie, um, Bethlehem, um, Norton, and then I have Brother, not with you today, dear. I have blessing that. <laughs> That's that was so. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, but I guess what? Christ met him Hallelujah. on the road to where? Damascus. Knocked him down. When he woke up, he said, Where am I? I'm glad like, I can see you. He said, go to this priest, and then he used, I will restore. And he exercised the most self-discipline ever in the rest of the Bible, the New Testament. He wrote three quarters of the Bible. Self-discipline. He wrote letters upon letters. This is what I have been. He was a Jew, but he was the apostle for us, the Gentiles. He brought the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. He said, look, there's no difference, because before it was the law for the Jewish people. If you are not by blood, you couldn't, I mean, serve God fully. But he said, no, 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 no. Christ is different because he came to die for us. Now you, Jew and Gentiles, we are one in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So he exercised self-discipline. Yeah. So Christianity, if you don't take anything from today's service, remember self-discipline is what? Christianity. Yes. Exercise self-discipline and it took you far. Hallelujah. Amen. So, number one is the victor's crown. Number two, the crown of rejoicing. Wow. This crown is awarded to those who bring others to Christ. It is often called a soul winner's crown, and it is a reward given to those who reach out beyond themselves and lead others to heaven. It says, For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? So the crown of rejoicing is winning, winning, winning souls into God's kingdom. That's why they say when you win souls in the kingdom of God, heaven rejoice. 
They are singing, they are praising, they are running them up. They are, they, are, they are having fun because they want a soul. So your crown for winning a soul to heaven this world will be a crown of rejoicing. Hallelujah. And the third crown will be the crown of righteousness. He says this crown is for those who long for heaven for, uh, to be their true home. Who long to see the face of their Savior when he comes for them in the clouds. The crown of righteousness, when you see Christ hanging in the earth, you long to go home with him. You want to see his face every single day. This is a crown waiting for you. Hallelujah. Timothy said, Henceforth, there is laid out for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not unto me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. So Timothy is saying that everything that uh, God will give to him, he will also give to you and I. Amen. The crown of life, number four, the crown of life. Believers who maintain their love for Christ while trampling over persecution, temptation, and even martyrdom will receive this crown. Many people will receive this crown because they gave their life for their faith. Any believer who has kept the faith when he was caused to do so, anyone who has suffered, endured, persecuted, and current others will receive the crown of life. So the crown of life is given to people who lay their lives down for Christ. The crown of life is somebody who says, look, even if it's unto death, I will give. I hold on to the God I serve. Even if, you see, Christ told oh, Abraham to go and sacrifice his son. Abraham said, even I know that God you gave me this son. And now you are telling me to go and sacrifice, I will and do it. Even if God says, look, in order to receive the crown, you have to quit this job and go for this job. But that pay for that job is very low. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. Because you have no idea what God has in store for you at that place. You have no idea the impact you can bring to that place. You have no idea what you can move in the kingdom of God by Obeying Christ. Imagine if Abraham didn't obey Christ. You think God will say, Look, your, your descendants will be like the sheep, the, the, the sun, and the seashore. No. Because God knew that Abraham was faithful. Be faithful to Christ's sins. Be faithful to Christ. Because Christ knows the end from the beginning. So because Abraham decided to sacrifice Isaac, he became the father of all nations. That is why you and I were able to go through the faith in Abraham and also worship Christ. Hallelujah. So the crown of life is our fourth crown. The fifth crown is the crown of glory. This crown is given to faithful shepherds of God's people. It will, it will, it will reward those who answer the call of leadership. And it says, leadership is not somebody who stood here preaching with the Bible. That's not leadership. Leadership is somebody who has overcome in their own lives situations that they couldn't before. You're a leader. Hello? You're a leader. Imagine, 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 for example, in my, in my past life, I used to love football on Sundays. Now I have overcome that. It means that I'm a leader. I can bring somebody who's working that path and say, look, because of Christ, this is what I did. And now I'm able to serve Christ fully. I'm a leader to represent it. So each one of you, you are leaders. Do not let title they discourage you. Title is we're not taking title to heaven. It's nothing. It's nothing. You are a leader in yourself. You are a leader in your home. You are to return. And prophetess, you're a leader to the triplets. Auntie yeah. Eleanor. <laughs> all our aunties and all our uncles, we are leaders in the kingdom of God. So try and lead. You see, it is easy to lead yourself than to lead somebody. 
And it becomes easier when you have led yourself to also lead somebody. Because you have walked that path. You know what it takes to give up and take the cross of Christ. To walk the road of Calvary and say, look, I will let everything go and follow him fully. I will let the, 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 the emptiness of this world, the greediness of this world, put it aside and follow Christ fully. That's what Christ is saying. He's saying, I'll give you the crown of glory. And he said, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive your crown of glory. That phrase not away. Unbelievers will be judged at a great white throne and be sentenced to eternal suffering in the lake of fire. So for unbelievers, the kind of the Lord Jesus will be a time of terror and judgment. But for believers, you can add the kind of the Lord is associated with the word hope. We have hope that when Christ comes, we will go. Amen. Say to your neighbor, I have hope. When Christ comes today, I'm going with him. Say it, you are not saying it properly. Christ is not happy. You, you are going, you have hope. When he appears today, you are going with him today. You, <laughs> you have to have hope in Christ. You see, sometimes when, 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 when you are not in the spirit, uh, you might think, I mean, I'm using myself as an example. When I was not in the spirit, I mean, I was in the world. When I go to church and the preacher is preaching and they say all this, I say, okay, time. get real. But when you are converted in your heart, and you know that you, you, were, you were on that line between death and life, you were just dead, and Christ shifted you to the, light, the, 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 the line on showed the light on you, believe me, you run for you, even road, do backflip for Christ. <laughs> you do somersault for him. Because you know where he took you from. He says, I pray and I wish everybody get, get that conviction. Because it's so real. It is so real that you can even feel Christ in your sleep. Even when you are when, when you are eating, the spirit comes and then you are you are you are speaking in tongues. When you are shouting, I mean, and anyway, you are in your workplace and you are praying, and somebody says, Oh, what's going what, on? What, 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 what? The spirit is with you. See? Well, isn't it? That's it, you're just me. Our own uh, pastor in the future, our future pastor. Yes. <laughs> In our own name, woman of God. Hallelujah. So, press it toward the goal. Every Christian should pursue these rules, but no crown could ever be uh, compared to the splendor of seeing our Lord Jesus Christ face to face. And until that day, we have a responsibility to run the spiritual race with all determination and devotion of an Olympic athlete. The Apostle Paul embodied this attitude when he wrote in Philippians 3 30 to 40. He said, Brethren, I count it not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching unto those things which are before me, I press towards the mark for the prize of the eye, calling of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said he presses toward the prize, because he knows the prize in heaven for him is better than any prize that man could ever give to Paul. You and I will know the price that we have in store in heaven. It's better than any price we have on this planet. You and I will know the price we have in heaven. It's better than our bank account. It's better than the house we live in. It's better than the clothes we wear. It's better than the perfume we put on. It's better than the shoes we wear. The price in heaven is better than anything on the face of the, on this planet. When God was creating the heavens and the earth, He had you in mind, saints. He had a place for you to prepare that one day he will take you. But you have to work for it. It doesn't come cheap. It's simple, but not easy. It becomes easy when you give it your all to Christ. And you see his face. And you say, Lord, I give everything to you. I will carry the cross with you. Nothing will shake you. That is the price we have in store for our saints. And every day you should be happy to be alive. Because your breath can bring a soul to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your breath, your breath, your speech, yes. your attitude, your absence can win a soul into heaven. Yes. Saints. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So what can you do? Do the job I can. God has a job for you now. Do it well. When God has something different for you, he will show you. Grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. You do this by prayer, by fasting, and the study of the word of God. You see, the study of the word of God has been made so easy and simple for us that even in your sleep, you can study the word of God. Amen. Shall, 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 shall I tell you how you can study the word of God in your sleep? Yes, you want to know. When you are sleeping, you are studying the word of God. You want to know. Uh, download the Bible app. <laughs> Put in your ear, 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 your, your earphone. Put it on Genesis and go to bed. Sleep. You are studying the word of God. Amen. When you wake up, it's still playing. You are eating, it's still playing. It's, it's, been, it's been made so easy for us. That, I mean, you don't even have to even open the Bible because people used to say, oh, I cannot read the Bible because I cannot carry the Bible too well. But you have your phone in your pocket. The Bible is now, now following wherever you go. So there's no excuse. You have to put in the work. Hallelujah. Yeah. Technology has saved us. Prepare yourself to serve God. Go on, let God's word. Memorize scripture. Keep your daily quiet, quiet time. Memorize scripture says key. When someone is going through a situation, you can call them scriptures. This is what the Bible says. This is how you are dealt with it. And God help you. Because you see, without scriptures, we cannot defeat the enemy. The devil went to Christ and he said, Tell this story to bread. He said, Haven't you read? It is written. Imagine Christ was clueless about the word of God. Satan would just have had him for small for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Kicked him about. So deny yourself and live for the for uh, for the Lord and Jesus and for others. This is the secret of a fruitful life. The Lord Jesus said, Very, very I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it does, it bring much fruit. It brings much fruit. Maintain your Christian fellowship with other believers. You should belong to a faith and faithfully support a local Bible believing church. Our, our Bible believing prayer. Tongue speaking, seeking the Holy Spirit church. Um, some churches, it, uh, every church is a church. But you have to go to a church where the Spirit of God is there. The Holy, you can feel the Holy Spirit is key. It is key. It is key. That's what the Bible is telling us. Amen. Amen. So, I'll end with you with the word Maranatha. In the early days of the church, the Christians had a word for greeting and departing. It was the word Maranatha. The word means our Lord is coming. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor, my Lord is coming. And my reward is with him. I cannot think of any better way to end this. Hallelujah. 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 God is a good God. As I bring today's message to a close. I mean, we have to store our words in heaven. But there are conditions. There are conditions. Maybe you've never prayed a prayer of salvation before. Maybe you've prayed the prayer of salvation, but you want to rededicate your life to Christ. It is important that every single day we ask for forgiveness and seek the face of God. If you're here this morning and you want to receive the gift that is waiting for you in heaven, the five crowns, because if you do not give your life to Christ, Christ will not award you with these rewards. You have to give your life to Christ. So if you can boldly stand up and pray a prayer, short prayer, to give, your, to give your life to Christ. Or if you want to rededicate your life to Christ. Jesus, so I look, uh, can you repeat this after me? Lord Jesus, I believe you came to die on the cross for my sins. And resurrected on the third day. I repent of my sins and ask for your forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Guide my life and help me do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.